All right, hey economic students, uh, it's Mr. Lindquist. Like I promised, I was going to give you a video breakdown of the assignment from Monday. Um, I got to talk to some of you, and that's great, but this assignment is really challenging, and uh, it's great test preparation and real-life uh, preparation as well. So what we're going to be working on is it's called How Markets Allocate Resources, okay? or I called it Market Price Chain Reactions. It's really tough because we're focusing on four goods here okay we're seeing how the price market price of one good is going to change three other goods really tough don't get overwhelmed okay a big part about this is that you need to to just focus on the one good at a time what is the one good being affected then you can move on to the next ones and the graphing is just as important okay it's just as important so um it looks like this um, what I'm going to do is do number six. Okay, we're going to focus on six. The key here, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't overthink it. Okay, you know supply and demand by now, and we know market price. Okay, so here's what I have to work with. Okay, so here's what it's going to look like. I have it, it, we're looking at number six. I have my graph over here, and uh, I'll try to keep that in the camera. As, as we go through, but know that where your market price starts is right there where they interact, okay? Right where they intersect, all right? Um, and know your equilibrium quantities going right down with that, okay? Quantity is really important. We don't talk about quantity as much as we do price, okay? All right, so number six, what does six say? Assume that the government imposes a tariff or tax on foreign steel to save the jobs of American steel workers. Steel is a major component of automobiles. All right, tariff is just another word for a tax that is coming from another country. Okay, so if, uh, example, if Toyota brings, uh, brings cars over, Toyota cars are made in, in Japan, or they're a Japanese con company, and so if they bring cars to America, if America decided to put a tariff on them, it would cost them, let's say, $1,000 for every car that they brought over. Okay, so the first thing we need to decide on these, is it going to be a demand issue or a supply issue? Okay, and once we decide that, then we need to decide if it's more or less. Another big tip, these arrows, please don't view those as up and down. View those as more or less. Okay, and you know the reason, okay, if you've been paying attention at all. So the first thing, the first good we look at is foreign steel. Well, how is foreign steel affected? Let's go back to our uh, scenario. It says there is a tariff or a tax on foreign steel. If you're getting taxed and you're a business, are you happy? No, you're not, okay? So is that going to affect supply or demand? Well, of course, you're a supplier, so it's going to affect supply. Are you gonna, if you're taxed, are you gonna supply more or less? You're gonna supply less. So circle that arrow down. Demand unaffected, circle the little dash. So if I'm supplying less, I need to shift left. And it looks like up, so you can't say up or down. You're supplying less right there, shifting left. And you're shifting inward, okay? Should look like that, okay? All right, well, what happened to my price? Now that I have the graph, I can physically see. I should be able to see. I'm just going to turn it so I can see it, the graph. Make my dotted lines over. Okay. What happened to my price? My equilibrium price changed now. You should be able to see that it physically went up. The price has gone up. Okay. Now, what happened to quantity? Am I closer to zero or further from zero? And if I'm further from zero, you know I supplied more. Well, as you can see, I'm closer to zero. My quantity supplied is less. I am less willing to supply it. So that would go down. Okay? That's step one. We got three more goods to do. I'll be right back. Okay. Now we need to look at U.S. Steel. It's the second graph on there. Okay, we just looked at foreign steel. We saw that you're going to supply less. It means your price is going to go up. Okay, and you're doing that because your cost just went up because of the government. 
because of that tax. So we're going to look at U.S. Steel, okay? Again, it's the best I have to work with. So um, hopefully this is helpful. I think this is the toughest one on the sheet. U.S. Steel. Now you need to think about how foreign steel prices and they're supplying less and their prices just went up. So if you're a business that needs steel, are you going to go to the higher priced foreign steel company or are you going to go to the U.S. steel, a U.S. steel company? Well, you are going to go to a U.S. steel company, okay? So a lot of you wanted to put supply that I got to talk to. A lot of you wanted to put supply for this. But we don't know anything about supply that's going to change with U.S. steel. And somebody said, well, uh, people are going to want more of it, so they're going to end up supplying more of it. Well, you just answered that question, okay? So if they want more of it, that's the demand changing first, okay? So demand for U.S. steel is going to increase, okay? You're going to demand more. Supply, unaffected. Demand graph, okay? Here you can say up, but it's, it's a bad habit to get into. So why don't you say we're going to demand more and shift right, okay? Demand more, shift right. Now that we have our graph, we can see what is going to happen to price, okay? What happens to price? Well, here was my first price, and do the dotted line over again if it helps you. Here's my second price, where they intersect. And I can't write it too upside down, but there you go. There's my second price. What happened? The price went up. Okay, increase in price. Okay, now I didn't do this last time, but we can do dotted lines down for uh, for quantity as well. Okay, if we do a dotted line down for quantity, then you can see. Put my zero in. Am I closer to zero? or further from zero. And if you know how to read a graph and you can follow that, then you can see I'm further from zero, meaning I have um, demanded more. Okay, the quantity is going up as well. All right, step two. Step two is done. Let me see it. Okay, next thing, step three. We're looking at automobiles. Okay, and you say, well, what do automobiles have to do with steel? Well, that should be your trigger to see if this is a supply issue or a demand issue. And some of you put demand when I talk to you. Some of you put demand and and you didn't even really know why. So you really need to think this through, okay? If you look back at the last two graphs on your sheet, go ahead, look down right now. What happened to price in both those graphs? Price went up, okay? So the price of steel, whether it's U.S., or foreign, and the price goes up, all right? Now, automobiles, what do they have to do with each other? Well, uh, to make a car, you need steel, okay? You need steel. So if your uh, cost, something that goes into it, if your costs go up and you're a business, are you happy or sad? You are sad, <laughs> Your cost just went up, so now it costs you more to produce it, okay? So producer, like I said, is code word for supplier. So is this a supplier or demand issue? This is a supply issue, okay? It's a supply issue. So demand, you can go ahead and circle the nothing spot, the uh, dash. On supply, is your supply, you're more willing to supply it or less when your costs go up? Costs went up you are less willing to supply, okay? Now, before you jump to price, and some of you smarty pants are jumping to price and quantity, let's graph it. You have to graph it on the test anyway, so graph it and show me. Supply is going to go, uh, you're going to supply less. You need to shift left. Looks like up. You can't say up. You need to say less. Left less again can you see the price now you should be getting pretty good at this one two all right you should be getting pretty good at this what happened to my price 
You can physically see my price went up. Okay? What happened to my quantity? Well, I'm closer to zero. I'm going to supply quantity-wise. I'm going to supply less. Okay? Make sense? All right. Step three is coming. Or that was step three. Step four is coming. Okay. Step four. Auto workers. Almost done. Almost finished this one. No problem. Okay. Auto workers. What we're looking at. Now, you just looked at automobiles. Okay. Automobiles, auto workers. It's right in the same thing. Now, the challenge is deciding if it's supply or demand. Because you can kind of figure out what is, what's going to happen. If you're supplying less automobiles, you're not making as many cars, what's going to happen to auto workers? And so you need to think about it as, is, is it a supply issue? Are people going to stop being auto workers? Did anything happen to them to make them stop wanting to be an auto worker? No. So supply didn't change. It's the demand for auto workers that changed. Okay, so the demand for auto workers is either going to go up or down. Well, we're making less cars. Common sense says, are we going to need as many auto workers? No, because we're making less cars. Okay, so demand for auto workers is going to go down. Okay, circle that down. Supply, right there for auto workers. Supply of auto workers didn't change. And that's where it's challenging because we're talking about workers and employees and people demand we need less auto workers because we need let to make less cars okay so we're demanding less here's my demand line right there we're demanding less we need to shift that left okay so i'm going to draw that in looks like that looks like that demanded less Okay, we've done this a couple times. Market price. There's the first one. Market price. Second one. That's drawing quantity while we're at it. Quantity one. Quantity two. Okay, my market price for auto workers. Gonna go equilibrium price gonna go down. Physically see it. One to two is going down. Equilibrium quantity. Are we closer to zero? At two, or are we further from zero? We are closer. Our quantity is going down. And that, you get every single point correct. Please study. Here's what it looks like finishing up. Please study tonight. Um, I hope this is helpful. Feel free to email me. Um, do the review. Five points extra credit for writing everything out um, because that is a form of studying. Okay, so do the review. Uh, Look back at your stuff, your sheets. Do the practice stuff on the Weebly on the website. And uh, just do your best. You're going to do great. All right. See ya.